the today's again and today's video I'll be discussing why Kamala Harris I think would be the perfect candidate for the Democrats to run in 2024 now I'm gonna start talking about this as I fill out the typical safe state map and after that I'll talk about some other states anyway so Kamala or Joe Biden I think he more or less I don't want to say represents where America stands politically but that's the best way I can say it I guess um, if you look at how much Hillary Clinton if you look at her 2016 numbers i mean popular vote wise because obviously donald trump won the electoral college but he didn't get the most um votes anyway so popular vote wise if you look at hillary clinton's win you look at joe biden's win and whatnot i think that um a lot is um shown throughout a lot of that and i think that right now joe biden won by five percent well i think that he would realistically win by four percent if you were against or maybe three percent if you're against a, a normal candidate in a normal election that wasn't 2020 um he would probably win by like three like he would probably win by three or four percent if you were in a normal election but obviously this election wasn't so i think that at this point joe biden kind of represents where america is a um left-leaning moderate nation but it's shifting to the left um it, a lot of these states are getting higher and higher minority populations. Minority turnout is growing, um, and this nation is just shifting to the left. So um, I'm going to be talking, and at that point, I think that Kamala Harris would be a fair representation of the, where the nation was at, and I think that <clears throat> she could also um, she could also raise turnout. She could be um, a very um, I'm trying to think of the right word here. A very exciting, I guess, would be the best term. A very exciting, um, well, no, it would be the best term. A very exciting candidate who could raise turnout pretty high. Um, and not only minority turnout. I think that she could raise turnout high among um, younger voters and even um, white, traditionally conservative voters that, for whatever reason, may turn out to vote for her. I don't necessarily think that she would win a lot of white conservative vote. But I think that she could do decent, not as well as Joe Biden, but still having been in Joe Biden's cabinet, she could she could still um, win enough of that vote. So here, as you can see, a lot of um, most of these states are the states that are not typically labeled safe. I'm going to go label um, a few of these states safe. First off, Colorado. I think it would shift a few points to the left, um, which would make it a safe state. I think that Hillary, or Hillary, Kamala would probably win by about 16%. Um, so I think that she would probably win, um, in the state of Colorado by safe margins. Um, the state of Virginia could be safe. Kamala Harris would probably win by around 13, 14%. So if she's able to win by a percentage point, um, or two more than I anticipated, yeah, she can probably win Virginia. It's, it's all up to, um, how well she does among different voters and actually will the Republican candidate because I don't have a Republican candidate right now. I think that she could make Virginia safe, but if not, it'll definitely be a high likely. Um, and now, as we take a look at the rest of the states, I'm going to go label some of the states that would um, probably be likely. Minnesota, New Hampshire, both definitely going to be likely. So you're probably carrying Minnesota by, like, well, it depends on turnout at this point. Um, there's, I'm not, like, Minnesota, obviously, is not a state that's known for having, like, a huge minority population, but, like, if um, the turnout is high enough in like literally every single state, she can probably win by larger margins because regardless of how large a minority population is, um, minority votes are going to favor her regardless, um, even if it's only by a little bit and even if there's only a tiny bit more. But I still think that she could win a lot of these votes. Along the Rust Belt, um, I don't necessarily know that she'd be a great candidate for the white working class. I don't think she would be good as, as good as Joe Biden would be. But she would definitely be better than Hillary Clinton was among the white working class. So I think that she would do somewhere in between um, as well as Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton did. Probably a little bit farther um, to the left than, Hill than in the middle. But I think that Minnesota would probably be likely margins. Probably, a, at best case scenario, 8%. Um, I don't really see it getting any higher... Than that, um, now which state should I talk about? Let's go, um, well, let's go look at some lean states. First off, so Nevada, I think that Kamala Harris were to run, uh, it depends on the Republican candidate, but I think that she were, if she were to raise on um, Hispanic and Latino turnout high, which I think that she could definitely do, I think she could win back a lot of the Hispanic and Latino vote that Joe Biden lost, 
Um, I think that the state could probably be upwards of 4% um, for her. Oh, I completely forgot to talk about New Mexico. I think New Mexico will be like a 12, 13% victory for her. Anyways, um, let's, which state should we talk about next? Let's go to label some Republican states. First off, Alaska. I think that she can make Alaska a little bit more competitive. I don't really think that anyone's, I don't think that she's going to go campaigning in Alaska in a state that's already going to be hard for her to win. That's not even in the continental U.S. and there's only three electoral votes. Um, I think that she could, like, make a play for it. I don't think it would be a very successful play. I think it would be similar to Trump's play for Minnesota, where I, I, I at least would be questioning why she would do that. Like, I was, I was wondering why on earth Trump was trying to make a play for Minnesota when it was to say that he was looking like he was going to lose by 7%-ish. And it was already a Clinton state, and it was only nine electoral votes, and he didn't even win it in 2016. That that kind of confused me as to why he would be focusing on winning Minnesota and not Michigan, um, which is weird because he could have won Michigan, I think. I don't think he would have, but I still think he definitely had the chance to. Anyway, so Nevada, um, or not Nevada, sorry, what am I saying? Alaska, um, I think that it'll probably still be a likely state. I, it's shifting to the left. And if Lisa Murkowski were to become an independent of caucuses with the Democrats, it'll probably shift a little bit more. I still think it'll probably be like six, seven percent victory. Um, let's let's go talk about Kansas. Um, yeah, it's not gonna flip. Not gonna flip for at least twenty years, probably. Um, it's shifting to the left. It shifted what six percent to the left, I think, and it was it was like a fourteen percent victory. So it'll take another. Um, let me do the math. Yeah, okay, I was right. Eight years. In 2028, according to that, it'll be 2% victories um, for Republicans. I don't think it will be. I think it'll take, like, at least 16 years for it to be 2% victories. Um, maybe 12. Maybe 12 if Democrats are able to act um, fast in Kansas. I think at this point, Kansas, um, at this point, it's not going to go to the Dems. It could um, in a while, but I think it'll probably be, like, a 12, 13% victory for the um for the Republican South Carolina, she could do very well here. It's shifting to the left, um, and it's, it's probably going to be a swing state in 2028. May even be a swing state in 2024. I doubt it. Um, I don't see it becoming a swing state by 2024. There would have to be um, there would have to be rapid change in South Carolina. I think it could happen. That's a high black population, so I definitely think that um, it could. But it would it would need um something like Stacey Abrams in Georgia, and I don't um necessarily know if that's gonna be able to happen. I think that Stacey Abrams um what she did won't really be replicated, um not in the time span that she was able to do it in at least for a long time. I think that South Carolina as best case scenario a five percent victory for Republicans. I don't think it will be. I think it'll be more like a seven percent, eight percent, nine percent victory. Um, if Kamala Harris were to run. Now let's go talk about um, another Democratic state. Let's go talk about Arizona. Um, I think she would win it by about 3%. We've seen Kristen Sinema and Mark Kelly win it by 2-3% victories. I think that she would do well in Arizona. Um, if the Republican candidate is more of a traditionalist, I think that she would probably win it by what Joe Biden went by. Um, but right now, I don't think that the Republican candidate will be. I think that she'll probably win it by about 3 or 4%. Especially if she can raise turnout, um, it'll definitely be like a 3 or 4% victory. Probably lower end of that, probably around 25 to 3%. Um, but a somewhat large victory nonetheless. Let's go talk about now um, main 2nd Congressional District. I think it'll be a lean red, probably like 4 or 5%. Um, all the polls and whatnot had Kamala Harris win it, or Kamala Harris, Joe Biden winning there. Obviously, the polls are not right this election. But, um, I don't think she would win there. It has, I believe, unless, um, like, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but last time I checked, it had a high white population, which is obviously not a good sign for Democrats. Um, so I think that that obviously did not favor the Democrats, considering that it had a high white population. I think Obama... I mean, obviously, Democrats had won there before. Obama was able to do, um, he was able to do really, um, strongly, like, just about everywhere. He swung in the end by 22%, but, um, 
main second. I don't think it'll vote blue, um, at least until 2032. I doubt it even then. I don't think, I just don't think that Kamala Harris will be able to have the type of, um, support from white voters that, um, Barack Obama had to be able to win states or areas like Maine second. Um, areas similar to that, not Pennsylvania, um, Iowa and Ohio. I think the Iowa will probably be lean or likely margins. Well, Ohio's probably going to be lean margins. I think Ohio will be like 4 or 5%. Well, Iowa will probably be like 9, 8, 7%. Actually, if Kamala Harris is running, Ohio might be a likely margin. Because, um, like I said, I don't necessarily think that she can do too well among white voters. I think that she can do decently. Um, I don't think that she'll be great among the white working class. I think she'll probably lose it by like 6%-ish in both Iowa and Ohio. Um, okay, there's a few interesting states still left. Let's go talk about Texas next. I think that Texas will probably be a lean red state. It'll probably be, probably be like 4, 3, 4, 2 percent, somewhere between there. Um, I think that she will lose it. Even if turnout is raised and she's able to regain that, um, Latino and Hispanic support, which I think she'll be able to do. I think that she'll raise turnout. Not, not significantly, but I think that she'll raise it a little bit, and if she can win, um, if she can win that other racial slash ethnic group vote, and then do better among the Latino and Hispanic vote, which she was not able to do, she, or not she, which Joe Biden was not able to do, he barely won it, it was the tightest, um, or maybe other racial slash, slash ethnic groups, it was one of the two tightest, um, tightest groups, tightest, um, racial groups out there, which is obviously not good for them. This is a group that, sh that they should be winning by, like, f what, um, 20, 20, 30%. They should be doing a lot better than how than they are right now among um, Latino and Hispanic voters. And I think that Kamala Harris can do that. I don't necessarily think, I think that um, Joe Biden was a bad candidate for Hispanic and Latino voters. And at this point, um... There are most Democrats could win it back. There are a lot of Democrats I don't think that could. Uh, Joe Manchin obviously comes to mind. Um, a lot of these more conservative Democrats and are also older conservative Democrats I don't think could. Um, I'm trying to think. Michael Bloomberg, like I said, these older conservative Democrats. Um, some older Democrats, some I think could, like Bernie I think could, but he he has um. For an older candidate, he has a strangely, um, strong relation, or relationship, um, he, he does oddly well with, um, younger voters and minority voters, so I think that, that he's a bit of an exception, I can't think of, um, many others at the moment that would actually maybe potentially run for president, but right now, I think that Texas is probably lean red, now let's go, um, take a look at Wisconsin, I think that it would still be tilt red. This is still my prediction in the state of Wisconsin. I think it'll be probably pretty competitive, though. I could even actually, I'm I'm on the fence because it's it's so competitive. I may be putting it in the tilt blue column. I don't think that she's a great candidate for the Rust Belt. If she were to win it, it would be by 0.1 or 0.2 um, percent. Whoever the Republican were to win it by, the best case scenario for them is 0.4 percent. It's gonna be an incredibly close date. I'll tell you that. Um, so it's, it's really, um, open, it's really open at this point to whoever can win there. Like I said, it's really close. I'm going to label it lean or tilt red just because that's what I have in my presidential election prediction. I think that it is going to be a competitive state, very competitive. Um, I just don't think that necessarily Kamala Harris has the ability to reach out to those white voters as well as many Republicans do. And Nebraska's second, it's either lean or likely. It's it's on the fence. Joe Biden won here by like six and a half percent. I think that she'll probably win by smaller margins. Whether it'll be high lean or low likely um remains to be seen. It'll be somewhere in that general area though. I think that she'll probably do a little worse than Joe Biden there, but still do pretty well. Um next is Minnesota, Michigan. I think this will be lean blue. Joe Biden won here by, like, almost 3%. I think she'll probably win by, like, 2.5%. I don't think she'll be much worse than Joe Biden. I think if she can raise turnout enough, she'll probably do pretty well. And I think she can do pretty well among the white working class. Not amazing. Um, she'll probably, she's definitely still going to lose. Or, 
lose or do um lose or do very poorly among the white working class. But I don't I think that she might do she'll obviously do worse among the white working class than Joe Biden. Joe Biden for a Democrat, it was it was weird because he did worse among um, Hispanic and Latino or his minority voters, but he did better among white voters. But I think that she, um, she would probably do better among minorities and a little bit worse among white voters. So those those two might cancel each other out. It might even help her that she's doing better among minority voters than she is among. Um, white voters because at this point for Democrats they there's there's a certain point there's a certain climax that they can reach with um white voters but I mean there is sort of a climax for minority voters but they typically white voters have a larger share of the electorate than they do a share of the population so there's there's a sort of more room to grow um especially when it comes to raising turnout now there's only a few states left Pennsylvania, I think, will probably be, like, lean or tilt blue. It'll be really competitive. Depends on the, um, the margin, or the candidates. I think that I'll probably be between 0.8 and 1.2-ish. I think that she'll do better than Joe Biden among that, um, those Hispanic and Latino areas in Philly that Joe Biden did bad among. Um, she'll probably do worse among the white rural vote, however, or make still a lot of the population, but it's, it's not, like... I understand that Pennsylvania, geographically speaking, is a somewhat large state. So a lot of these rural areas, just like throughout this general area, are there's a lot of voters there. But I don't necessarily think that um, it's enough to the point where if she does better among voters in like Philly, that she'll, um, if she does worse among white rural voters, that it'll cost her an election. I think that she can definitely... Um, do very well among those white rural voters, and in other suburbs, I think that she will do well in the suburbs. Um, in a lot of these states, she seems she she would probably be a strong candidate in the suburbs. Now, there's only three states left. Um, I'm gonna talk about Florida real quick. I think that Florida's lean or tilt red. It's gonna be competitive. Um, definitely. I think that she'll probably lose it by similar margins to what she would win Pennsylvania by. Um, I think she can do well among that, um, the Hispanic and Latino vote, but I think that for what she makes up with the Hispanic and Latino vote, she will lose in the white, older white vote. I think that she'll, um, still make a net gain in the state of Florida, but she'll still lose. Um, I don't, I don't think that she'll, um, lose by a whole lot. I think if she were to be able to do well among the white, um, the older white vote, she would win Florida. But she won't do well, or she won't well, or she won't do better among the older white vote in Florida. Um, and I'm gonna say it's probably gonna vote low lean. Um, so I'm gonna label that a lean red. Notice a low lean. Next up in the state of Georgia, uh, I'm on the fence about whether or not to put this in tilt or lean. There's been discussion about whether or not it'll be tilt or lean. I think it's gonna be tilt. Um, these these elections were very um, both Georgia elections were strange. Obviously, the presidential election was strange. Joe Biden did very well among um, independents. I haven't, I'm yet to be able to find the exit polls for the Georgia runoffs. Please link them in the comments, guys, if you um, have them. I'd love to see them because I haven't been able to find them. But um, in the state of Georgia, I think, in the runoffs at least, minority turnout was higher, and I think that that makes up for Joe Biden's strong performance among independents. I still think that it'll be um, not that large of a margin. I don't think that people should get ahead of themselves. Georgia's not going to be lean blue. It's not going to be 2% victories. Raphael Warnock did something against a candidate that was not good, that people disliked, um, who I think she had already, she was trying to object the election results. I'm not, I think that she just said, I think she said that she wasn't gonna, um, I think, was, I think it was actually the Capitol riots. I might be wrong on that, but still she was going to try to object a bunch of election results from, um, an election that they, voted in in a state that Joe Biden won in, which is obviously not a good thing to do. Also, like I said, not a very good candidate. And these voters wanted stimulus checks. There wasn't much split ticketing. Um, so John Ossoff still did pretty well. I think it'll probably be like between 0.7 and like 1.3%. It'll be a competitive state, um, but I think that in the end, the Democrats will win. 
let's just say I've I've heard talking about Philippine in twenty twenty four North Carolina. Um, sorry if you guys hear dogs barking in the background. I don't know if you guys can, but my neighbor's dog is going crazy. Um. Anyways, I don't know if you guys can hear it through my mic, but it's it's really loud for me right now. It's it's going a little insane, but um. Anyways, in the state of North Carolina, there's been a lot of talk about North Carolina flipping blue. Um, it was it's narrowed significantly since 2016 when Trump went up by like three and a half percent or whatever, and then he went up by like one and a half percent, and now it's expected if if it shifts that much again, it'll go to Joe or Kamala Harris, I guess, in this one by by one percent. So um, this state I think will be very competitive. I don't think it'll be larger than half a percentage margins for any candidates. Um, I think that Kamala Harris can raise turnout. And I think she can do better among um, minority voters. I I think that Republicans at this point won't do much better among white rural voters than they already are. So at this point, it's it's there's room for Kamala Harris to grow, and it's all it's all um, the state is all basically will be decided on whether or not. Um, she grows into that space, or she um, she stays where Democrats currently are, which is why, like, if I could label this a toss-up, if I label toss-ups, I would, but I don't. So it's it's really difficult. I think that at the moment it's a tilt red by like 0.2 percent. It's all if whether or not Kamala Harris can um, if she can do well enough among white voters and um. Rural or rural minority and suburban voters, which I think she'll do very well among them. I think that it'll be decided by thousands of votes. It'll be incredibly close, but not quite close enough. Um, so I can label it tilt blue. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for my next video, whenever that may be. Sorry this video was so long, and I will see you guys there. Bye.